<laughs> Coach Patrick. There we go. Zach A. Coach, man. Coach, what's your favorite movie? <laughs> like, <laughs> what do you want to talk about today, Coach? What you, tell, tell us, tell you seen you people, Coach. <laughs> Have you seen you people? <laughs> I haven't Coach, seen you people, but it looked funny. I haven't seen new, you people yet, but it looked funny. I need to watch some comedy, man. I need some laughter going on around here. <laughs> Are you a Kenya Barris fan? You watch Blackish or Grownish <laughs> or Mixedish or any of those I things? Like, like I, I like Blackish. My favorite movie is like Shawshank Redemption, so I feel like I'm in oh, a prison. Is, I, you know, I've <laughs> never seen it. I've never seen Shawshank. Coach, with the way the last <laughs> week has gone, Coach, don't watch that. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's find let's find something you people's the perfect movie man let's let's I'm find something let's let's find something happy and 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 cheerful for you for for you watch you're, you're you're all smiles right now obviously losing's part of the process you're you guys you're in all of these games uh yeah. the, you guys you, you're gonna have this you're gonna have that wilt chamberlain number here pretty soon where like your players are averaging more minutes per game than are actually in a college basketball game. You got to going to overtime so often, but I, I, I know it's got to be, you know, it's got to be tough when you get to those overtime games and they don't go your way. You know what? It, it's tough. And I always got to bring it back to like, yes, we're still learning, you know, but, but we always seem to be up or down or up even last on Saturday night, you know, we're up with two, two with, with uh, eight seconds to go in the game and uh, you know, make an error and uh, the game goes to overtime and we can't, we can't get stops, but it shouldn't have got to that point. And that's what I'm trying to get get our guys to know the mistakes made at the beginning of the game are just as just as crucial as the mistakes, you know, made at the end of games. And so um I'm just hopeful that learning curve happens quicker, quicker than most. But I but I know, you know, that that I was brought here to kind of guide this plane and there's gonna be some turbulence here and there. And you know, my job is to try to steady that steady this plane and and get this thing going back in the right direction. Coach, you've been around a lot of basketball, man, and and have you seen uh, a year? Have you been a part of a year quite like this with so many close games? Like, feels like almost all of them have been close. No, I, I haven't. You know, and and you know that's one thing with the team. I'm kind of like year one. I'm usually usually getting blasted by fifteen or twenty, or, or, or you know your team quits, or or you got guys leaving the program halfway through because they don't they're not they're not trusting what you're doing. Um, we don't have that. So the, the the close games have not been the case. I've either won some early or got, got blown out. But uh, this has been a good learning curve for me because I've had to, I've never had to draw up so many late game plays in my in my life. I've only got so much in my head, man. So I'm always like, man, <laughs> what what can I pick up? Because you don't you're not in those situations a lot during right. the course of the college season. And we've had every situation you can think about, sideline with two seconds to go, in line with one second to go. Um, so it's helped my team kind of learn how to adapt in those situations. I'm just hopeful that we can continue to push through the door more than we have it, uh, as of late. I think you got great perspective on this coach. That's part of the reason, uh, you know, Sac State brought you in here. But how how are your players receiving this? Because it's, it's, it's got to be dejecting to walk off the floor uh, after, you know, overtime game after overtime, especially, you know, as, as you said this weekend, those, those games you feel like you have in hand. You know, so, some of it's dejecting. And and some of it is, and I and I address this. I'm like, when you when you haven't won at the level that I, we all that I expect them to win at, some of it's they're they're just happy to be in these games. Like they think it's okay to be to be up by one at halftime against Eastern Washington and lose. They think it's okay to be uh, a chance to beat Montana State. Like like I'm trying to teach them like it's not okay. Like we're supposed to beat them. Um, that that so. I don't think that the the losing hurts, but it doesn't hurt as much to them yet. You know, and I think that because I think there's a there's a complacent part that, you know, we're doing better than we were last year or the year before. And even the guys I've got from from the portal, which is the the, the transfer world, some of them have left situations where they've where they've quite frankly lost before, or some of them have left situations where they haven't played a lot. And so they're just happy to be playing. So I'm just trying to get all those uh, you know all that in, in into one season just just very hard and trying to trying to get this group going in the right direction. Is it is it fair to like paraphrase what you just said is it, it doesn't hurt as much as you would like it to for them? It, 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 correct. You know, it doesn't hurt as much as I, you know, it's it, and this this day and age of kid that you're dealing with, but it's also um you know, I want to I want to win the big sky, you know, and I and that's it, and that's my goal here mm-hmm. and I want them to know that. 
um, and that losing hurts. You know, not playing, losing hurts when you make mistakes that you shouldn't make. You're gonna you're gonna, you're gonna miss shots, right? That that happens with the game. But when you're missing blockouts, you're missing defensive assignments. I, I sound like my man Silas last night at, with the oh. Rockets. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not quite there yet, but but that's the stuff over the course of time that that begins to begins to hurt when you you've been somewhere now. He's been there three years. Uh, I'm sure it's more frustrating to him than it is is to me right now. Don't walk out on us, coach. Don't walk out on us. They're, they're no, not no, doing no. what they're supposed to do. We felt so bad for Stephen Silas last night. No man, but, but, was, but it gets it, it gets tough, man. When you get when you get young kids and you do the scouting report and and you tell tell them, you know point man and ball and they don't do that um yeah. it becomes frustrating especially when you're dealing with pros like he's dealing with yeah, yeah. it's funny you say that because like like i said i'm coaching some 10 year olds and i'm talking to them about point man and ball and i guess it's still college guys you got to tell them, hey point man and ball like these are things that you know you and i and you would think uh the, the get ingrained in their head at this age of like 10 and 11 years old, but it's to this day, you're still teaching those things, huh? No, no. Well, cause everybody does shell drill. You do it. I'm sure with your 10 year olds, we do it in college. They do it in the NBA. I keep telling them the teams that do shell drill at the elitist level around the world are the teams that are good. Like, mm -hmm. and so look at the Grizzlies, look at the, whoever's winning the NBA at the moment. It ain't going to be because the offense It's going to be the defense is, is, is impacting the game. And so, whether it be the Miami Heat, you know, every night they're gonna be good. I don't care who you put on their roster. It's gonna be a it's gonna be a fight because that's what they that's what they uh, demand, you know. And so um, that's where we're at. That's where I'm at. That's right now. Coach Patrick gonna be in speaking to the Sacramento Kings next weekend, talking like that. <laughs> well, look, I wanted, I wanted to ask Coach about that because, Coach, you know, we look in, in front of the team, we can say like. You guys got to play defense. And it's right. Right. You got to play defense. Right. But I look at somebody like the Kings. Right. And it's like they don't have the defensive weapons and the best thing they do is score. So as a coach, like, how do you how do you maybe compartmentalize, especially you as a defensive coach, being like, man, I wish they would play defense. But the best thing we do is score. We do it at an elite level. How do I keep them like wanting to play defense, but also understanding like, hey, we got to get our 120 up. Like, how does that balance yeah. work out? You know, it's like we're the number two offensive team in the league. Like, you wouldn't think that. So I keep telling them we're number, we're the number, sorry, number two defensive offensive team in the league. But it's still equating to three losses in a row. So until you guard, like, it doesn't matter how nice, how sweet our offense looks, and and I feel good that I draw. It doesn't matter unless you go down there and guard. And what I try to tell them is like, defense is the ticket to the fast break. So you get a stop. Now you can go and do, do what you want. Cause I do give them um, the first eight seconds of the clock to do what the heck they want to do. And then I, then it's my, then it's my time to, to run offense. And so that's what I try to uh, give them the bait on, you know, when it's hard, man, like we lead the league in rebounding, you know, we, we damn near in the country and rebounding. Um, but until we defend, we're going to have nights like where it's, it's going to be like this, you know, and um, I'm just hopeful that it, it, it rears its head here soon. I changed the lineup. If that helped you on, on Saturday, yeah. I put a yeah. freshman in the starting lineup and first play of the game, he takes a charge. Second play of the game, he dives on the floor. And so mm -hmm. the tone was set, you know, and, and I'll and I'll do it again until until I get guys that can defend and and, and rebound the way that I expect them to. If I play for coach, man, I'd be shooting with uh in the first seven seconds, like the shot clock was running down to zero. <laughs> well, you give me eight <laughs> seconds, let me go to work real quick. Let me get time. As long as, it's three three paint, <laughs> as long as it's a three or your feet are in the paint, man, go ahead and do it. <laughs> Coach, we talked, uh, the Kings had a tough one on uh, Sunday and, you know, there was uh, the, the, the Kings universe. Yeah. Kings universe was falling apart that night. And it was like, Oh man, this, this, this is the moment like it's happening. And there, there, there was kind of a moment where it's like, Hey, look, look around the score, but like Denver just lost by 30 to Minnesota. Right. Like those those games happen. The Kings have lost two in a row at that point. But all in all, they're still in a playoff spot. They're still in the third seed. Your goal is to win the big sky. It's still very, very attainable for you. How how much are you still reiterating to your team? Like, hey, we had a goal to start this season. It's still very much in reach. How badly do you guys want to get to it? Oh, all the time, you know, and I try to make put the, I try to put our season into into fourths, you know, and uh, into 
four to four quarters and we're in the start of our last quarter. So like, what can we do in game one this week, which is at Northern Arizona? Can we just go one and oh, and then we'll focus on the next game, which is Northern, Ari which is Northern Colorado, which would be hopefully two and oh. So that's kind of how I try to focus it. Cause these guys, you can't, can't look too far down the road with, you know, and I think even our fans and even some of my parents, so I'm guessing NBA fans, like the Kings have been on the road like a week or 10 days already. Right. And I think they still got, Two more days left, yeah, and they come back. Yeah, yeah. One more on the road. I mean, it's hard, man, to be on the road, to win, to live in a hotel. I don't care. If you're making $10 million, $40 million. That's some long, you know, that's, that's hard, you know. And, and uh, so if they come off a road trip with a, with a, I don't know if they got six, this is a six game road trip. If they come back seven, yeah, seven. It's seven. They're three and three right now. Yeah. So you come back four and three. I would think you could take that at the beginning of the season for, for, for yeah. any team, you know. And, um, especially for a new team like them. And so we're in the same boat. Can we, can we split on the road every week is my goal. If we can go two and zero, that's great. And I'm sure Mike is preaching the same thing to his young, young squad. Coach, we're, uh, we're on the precipice of um, one of the, what does that mean? Well, not one of <laughs> I'm talking about. <laughs> we're at the beginning. Can he use the school word? <laughs> Sac State. That's a, that's a little Sac State word for you right Stanford. there. Don't say Stanford. Don't say Stanford. We are on the precipice of like basketball euphoria. I call it that because everybody talks about March Madness, but it all lines up perfectly, right? Like high school. Is about to enter playoffs. I think they got like one week left of regular season in high school yeah. playoffs, and you go into uh, conference championships and March Madness, and then the NBA playoffs right around the corner. Do you get a chance? Um, you've been in college for for a while now, but do you get a chance to like watch high school playoffs and just enjoy it? I know there's recruiting and stuff like that, but do you just get an opportunity to just enjoy high school playoffs? I love high school basketball oh, playoffs. Man, I love it. I love it. I love it. I took my kids last week. I went to. And I'm not cutting. Kind of, last last week, I happened to go to Sakai versus Capital Christian in uh, in Sakai in, near my hood. That thing was like rocking, you know, just the atmosphere. And for my kids to see that that, that this is going on in Sac, you know, I went to uh, Christian Brothers the other week. I've been to Rio American. I think my guys today are going up to Elk Grove uh, mm -hmm. to watch a game. So yeah, I love it. I think high school playoffs to me is the most purest um, basketball there is, you know, and mm -hmm. and. For me, that was still my funnest time in, in, in high school. The playing, uh, the 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 your JV guys coming to cheer you on, your cheerleader, like that's a big deal to me, and yeah. I and I and I love it, and I try to get out as much as I can, especially being new here in Sac. Yeah, let's go get a couple. To to. Let's go get a couple uh, wins in the cold, coach. Let's go, let's go get a couple. <laughs> cold let's in the go. altitude, bro. Yeah, I know. Flagstaff, I, I love it. But there you go, hey, man. Well, I keep there. saying it, you know, go, hey, I think I got some eligibility if you, you need a shooter. No, he doesn't. You know, Didn't you, you just shooter, hear this man talking about I could, defense? I could, take a, I could take a PE class or a music class. Well, that's what I got to take. School. J.R. Smith went back to school. Come on. That's right. <laughs> J.R. Smith played more defense than Kenny did. <laughs> <laughs> I argue he did. <laughs> he went back to school for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate you coach good luck this week man all right guys thanks so much see you all right man coach david patrick right